CMOs won't care about rankings. They care about conversions. In your report, present that first. And if you don't have that data yet, start by getting it ASAP. Hello, welcome to another episode of the SEO Growth Podcast. Hello, our fans. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great because today I'm with this guy. Oh my God. He's so amazing. He's been uh, with the team for a long time now. Uh, and now he's recently become the R head of SEO. So let's welcome Usman Akram. How are you, Usman? Thank you so, so much for having me, Mila. I'm amazing. How are you? All good. I'm, I'm really having a great time because, you know, um, tomorrow Maeva is going to land here in Lisbon and we are going to the Web Summit for the rest of the week. So I'm very, very excited about that. And of course, excited to be recording with you. This is our first episode together. So I'm like very, very excited. How are you feeling? I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped for this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been, for those who don't know, Mila and I have, have been working together as um, the perfect CAM and strategist combination. And now she's working um, as our marketing manager. So I'm super, super excited for this conversation. Great. Me too. So before we dive into the topic for today, that is how to report your SEO efforts to your leaders, which is a very uh, timely topic right now that we are uh, going to close uh, Q4 very soon. First, I wanted to ask you, how was the SEO roundtable, the last one? Because I know that it was the first time that you were leading the roundtable and I just wanted to know how it went. It was amazing. I think um, I love doing it and conducting it. I would love to do it um, anytime soon again. Um, I was expecting a lot more questions than I actually got um, on the on the on the conference, but probably it was because maybe I did a good job. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Let's um, aim for that. Let's choose that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean. I totally love that um, and I would love to do it again. Uh, I definitely had to do a lot of work, you know, just to put together the material because I really wanted it to be super deep and I wanted to give some examples of mm -hmm. how exactly you set targets, um, not just the theoretical stuff and the hypothetical stuff. So, yeah, um, so my best part, the, my favorite part was, you know, um, just running through the exact examples. So like giving them numbers, showing them how it works yeah. in Google Sheets. So like that was amazing. That was um, the part that I totally loved. Awesome. And just uh, for audience out there, we wanted to remind you that we'll have another SEO roundtable where you can go and ask your questions. It's completely free. It's a strategy session with our amazing strategists that we have here at Flying Cat. Maybe it will be Usman, maybe it will be Maeva, who knows? Uh, but it will be on Wednesday, November 30th at 12 p.m. EST. So we'll see you there. But for today, we have the agenda for today, that is how to report your SEO efforts to your leaders. So uh, on our last episode with Maeva, we touch on how to identify which content is driving results when you still don't have any conversions, because as we know, SEO takes just a little bit to show uh, real conversions, and that's what we aim for. But first, like previous to that, we still have some indicators that can show that we are on the right track, right, Usman? Can you name yeah. just a, a couple so that we will refresh that from the last episode? Yeah, 100%. Um, so I think when it comes to perf like defining performance, for your content pieces, there are different kind of metrics that you can look at, uh, even if you're not directly measuring conversions. You can look at, you know, rankings initially because they're usually a very good indicator of success early on. Then secondly, you can look at the, you can do a qualitative analysis of those keywords. What kind of keywords are you ranking for? If they resonate with your product, with your customers, if they match directly with the pain points of your customers, of your consumers. And then we can look at, you know, um, some engagement metrics like traffic. And then secondly, how exactly people are navigating through your website with your content, how exactly are they interacting with your content? So like, you know, time on page, um, pages per session, those kind of things, uh, just to see what level of engagement are we experiencing with our content? How, how people exactly are con 
consuming the content, right? You can take it to the next level later on uh, once you have more traction and you're actually generating conversions and it's been a while since you've you've been producing content with tools like, you know, Hardjar and other kind of um, session recording tools. But initially, those metrics from Google Analytics should be enough just to track those early indicators of success. All right. Awesome. So if you don't still, let's say I'm a marketing manager at a SaaS B2B and um, that I need to prove that what I'm doing SEO wise is working, even though I don't have conversions. So those are the metrics that I should be looking at when I'm going to report to leadership to justify the budget that we are investing in this, because um, we know it's not cheap, but we know it's it gets a lot of ROI um, in the long term. So once you have all these uh, indicators that are going up and they are indicating uh, that you're going um, on the right track, yeah, you're on the right track. So when it's time to report, how how do you structure that report? What are the main sections that should be in there to just to, you know, be, be very compelling with your leadership and stop, like, you know, avoid going too much into the technical aspect of SEO? Right. So I think the perfect answer to this would be that you have to zoom out and understand who your leadership actually is, right? So you need to know who is your leader, who are your leaders in your company, right? So for, for example, for an SEO specialist working on a report, they're just compiling data, analyzing data um, at the end of the month. Their leader can be an SEO manager or the head of SEO, right? For the head of SEO, their leaders can be head of marketing. So the leadership is very dynamic and you have to understand who exactly am I reporting to. Um, when, it, when you have an exact idea of who the leadership is, then you can get to know what metrics do they care about, right? What exactly matters to, to them? Um, if it's a C CMO, they won't be interested in rankings at, at all, right? They don't care about rankings or traffic. They actually care about the numbers that you're driving that have a business impact. Um, so I think people actually fundamentally don't understand, um, you know, you have to first think of your leadership and what matters to them. And then you can go on to, you know, define what metrics should I be reporting on? What, what sections should I keep in my, in my report, report? And what should the order be? Like what should be at the top? What should be at the bottom, et cetera, those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. so, so let's say you're in a big SaaS company. Let's, let's assume two different scenarios, right? And one SaaS company, you're a unicorn, a tech company with a lot of employees, a big marketing team, uh, working in different marketing channels, right? So most probably you have a whole team for SEO growth, for organic search growth. In that case, you have a head of SEO or an SEO manager, right? And then you have specialists working on individual elements of SEO, like, you know, backlinks, uh, you know, like off-page technical and on-page like content strategy. So you have these units within the marketing team, like SEO, paid search, um, social media, organic social, uh, all of those kind of different things. Um, once you have a good idea of how exactly the team is structured, then you decide what metrics should, I, should I actually report them? You know, so what metrics should I share with them on a monthly basis? So if in that scenario where the team is really big and they have, you know, this, um, SEO manager, you can definitely report on rankings. There's nothing wrong. I know that there's a lot of pushback on the fact that, you know, rankings are not the ideal metric to report on. They're a van vanity metric, but they're not vanity to someone who's into SEO, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so you can keep rankings, then you can keep um, organic search traffic for your SEO leaders, and then you can keep all of the engagement-related metrics, like, you know, um, how people are engaging with the content, how people are spending time on the page, those kind of things. There are still some vanity metrics, you know, which I think we'll touch upon later in this in this um, in this podcast. But um, broadly speaking, you can keep rankings, traffic, and some engagement metrics. Finally, mm -hmm. you have to tie in conversions because obviously, even for your SEO manager or your head of SEO, conversions are the end goal. The reason why it's the end goal for them is because their leaders care about conversions. Their leaders care about revenue. Uh, who is going to be the CMO or the head of head of marketing? So, 
in that environment, you can, you know, keep your report really SEO heavy, focused on metrics that are directly tied to SEO, and you can still keep, um, keep the flow going until you have conversions or revenue tied into the report, right? So you start with rankings and you finally give it, uh, tie it back to um, business impact in terms of, you know, for example, leads or revenue if possible. So that's like the one scenario. The second scenario would be that you're working in a, in a company that is relatively small. It's still a SaaS company, but it's growing, right? So maybe, um, maybe seed round or maybe series A, those kind of stages where the, where the team is relatively small. They just have one or two SEO people. And then there's a head of marketing leading all of the other um, components of the marketing team. In that setting, um, you don't have to incorporate that those many you know SEO metrics. You just have to directly tie your efforts with the final business outcome. Obviously, there are layers of business outcomes. So you, I'm not saying um, that you directly just go, hey, here's the revenue coming from organic search traffic. No, obviously you can you know, tie in leads, um, the sales win rate, um, the average customer value, and based on that, you can you know, come up with a revenue number. But um, you have to understand that your CMO or, or your head of marketing in a relatively small team and you're directly reporting to your head of marketing is not going to care about how many extra keywords you're able to rank. So mm -hmm. based on the dynamics of your team, you have to decide, you know, what comes up, what comes later, what, what are the sections that I don't have to touch at all on my report. So, yeah, so I think it all just depends on how exactly is your team structured and who is your direct report, um, who is your direct person that you have to report to. Yeah, perfect. So I was thinking more about in the second scenario when you say that you're going to report to, you know, your head of marketing or the CMO. What are also some other uh, <clears throat> very important sections that should be in there apart from the KPIs? Um, <clears throat> let's say I know that at Flying Cat, we recently rebumped our reports. Can you walk me through the sections that we have there and why they are there? Yes, sure. So how we do reporting at Flying Cat Marketing is, um, I, I, I know this this isn't exactly a word uh, that we use at Flying Cat Marketing, but this is just in my head. I call this, you know, rankings to revenue framework. Uh, I remember, um, you know, mentioning this in the SU roundtable as well. Um, I, I think it might be a good idea, you know, to just use this word in some of our SOPs, in fact. So the basic yeah. idea is <laughs> so the basic idea is that you think of rankings as the first metric to indicate success. And then finally, you have to tie everything back to revenue in some way. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, now, obviously, there would be some, you know, additional aspects you, in, in some cases. Uh, you won't have that data coming from the client where you can tie everything to revenue. You, you might be limit, limited to leads only. Um, so, so how I think about reporting is that you start with rankings. You tell, you know, um, what are the top performing pieces of content in my um, on, on my website, right? Mm -hmm. And by performance, again, I mean, you know, rankings, traffic, and revenue. So th th it should be bridged to end goal, which is revenue or leads, the business impact at the end. So um, the way we have structured is uh, structured this is we have these different set of metrics that we want to report on, but then the order matters a lot because finally when we're reporting, um, if the CMO is you know looking at the executive summary only, um, they don't want to know, you know, um, what what page is this specific keyword ranking on? What they need to know is what is the final end outcome? So we keep yeah. the business level metrics at the top. So, you know, in the executive summary, we're, we're only mentioning the top wins from the business point of view. Secondly, we later go, go on and tell them about the organic traffic, uh, about the total conversions. And again, conversions can be, you know, divided into different layers um, based on how exactly the funnel looks like. So, mm -hmm. so for example, sometimes it, it's, you know, just uh, driving demo requests. Sometimes um, the conversion is really, really long. So they have uh, different steps like, you know, tracking code installed, first insight viewed, those kind of things that indicate your product is being used. So depending on how exactly the funnel is set up, 
we show them the organic traffic improvement month over month, and then all of the conversions, like tied with all of the goals. So if they're tracking, you know, just demo request, then it's only demo request. If they're tracking, um, if what actually matters to them is the number of paying customers, then we definitely keep demo request in the in the loop. But still, we mention paying customers as the north metric, you know, the, the north star metric. Sorry. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, we once we have the organic traffic and the conversions and all of those kind of things mentioned, then we go on to a page level where we show them, you know. You, we've looked at the website broadly speaking, but now let's look at some of the top performing pieces of content on a specific level, like on an individual level, right? Um, let me just turn my light on, Mira. Right. So when we look at the pages on an individual level, that's where the actual insights um, are gained, right? Because you're looking at your website and you know, you know, um, we're getting this many conversions from organic search traffic and it's so cool and it's so fascinating, etc. But how exactly are people finding you? Like what pieces of content are contributing, contributing the most to that business impact that you're, um, that you're recording on a monthly basis, right? Um, and, and the division is really, really fascinating in most cases. For example, you'll often notice um, that, for example, you know, 50% of conversions are just coming from these five pieces of content. Um, so you definitely want to create more of those kind of pieces in the future. Um, so once we, we are, once we're at the page level, we try to go deep into the keyword level. And again, I don't mean just, you know, reporting on, um, how many keywords are ranking, um, where exactly are you ranking for this one keyword? What I mean is for the pages that are performing really, really well, we show them what is the top keyword for that page. So. What it actually does is it tells them that you're driving the most conversions with this one page or, you know, these five pages are contributing the most in terms of conversions. And these are the keywords that people are actually searching for in Google to land on those pages. So finally, the end level insight is that I know these pages are converting people and these are the keywords that help in those conversions. And that is an interesting and really, really important insight because it can drive the content strategy for you in the next couple of months. So yeah, so we start from the absolutely, you know, the most important business metrics. We go on to a page level and we finally go on to a keywords level corresponding to those pages. So that's how we structure everything and order everything in the report. Awesome. Do you think that maybe we can share a little template with our audience in the show notes? I think so. Yes. I think we can put together something that, you know, gives them an idea, like a high level breakdown. Yeah, because I think this is very, very useful now that we are going to close Q4 and report on this. Uh, It's going to help a lot. Yeah. And um, one other thing that I wanted to ask. So what happens if you don't have the data for conversions from your client or from your, well, if, if you're in a, if you're in a, inside a company, probably you do have access to that. But if you don't, um, what do you, what can you measure? I, I know that we do, uh, instead of doing, of reporting on the ROI and the actual money, uh, we do assisted conversions. So can you uh, maybe go a little bit deeper on that? Yeah, so basically there are different forms of attribution, right? First of all, if your company does not have conversions data, we need to dissect what exactly is the problem. Like, because, you know, setting up something in Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager is easy, but the problem is that the longer the sales cycle gets, the harder it is to track, right? Because people just take longer to make those decisions. More stakeholders are involved in that decision. So, uh, and I think usually the general rule is, um, the bigger the ticket value is, you know, the, the product value, the more money is involved, the longer it will take to, you know, make a decision. And obviously, yeah. um, organic search might have played some role in their overall conversions journey, but because the, the way these tools work, like Google Analytics, um, those touch points can get lost, right? It's very easy to lose them. Um, so for example, you know, I read a blog post, but then, you know, I don't make a decision for two months because I just don't need that software after two months or three months um, of regularly consuming a website's content. I finally need something 
and I think of them because, you know, I've been consuming their content regularly and I have that brand affinity in my mind. So this kind of a yeah. thing is not being, it, it, it might not be very easy to track, right? So uh, because, you know, in those two to three months, um, I might have visited their LinkedIn page a few times. I might have interacted a few of their employees and all of those touch points are totally lost. Um, mm -hmm. So I think there are different forms of attribution that we can use um, if you don't have, you know, um, direct conversions data. So there are four forms of attribution, basically. Four or five, five forms, sorry. Yeah, so there is first touch, um, there's last touch, there's linear attribution, um, there's W-shaped attribution, and then there's U-shaped attribution. So mm -hmm. um, if you if you mind, do you mind if I give them, you know, a very high level breakdown of all of these yes, attribution please. models? Yes, please. Yeah, Sorry. I would so, love that. Awesome. So um, for the first touch, what it means is that I entered the funnel with one piece of content and then all of the value get attributed to that one single piece of content that made me discover that website, right? So mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm going to, you know, hire Flying Cat Marketing. I'm looking for an agency. I search for a keyword like, you know, um, maybe content marketing trends because I'm looking for some information while I'm on my search of, you know, hiring an agency or something like that. Um, I finally mm -hmm. land on Flying Cat Marketing's website, but obviously that search is not going to make me decide right away that I I need to hire this agency, right? I, I'll interact with my wife a few times. I'll read some other websites, blogs. Um, I'll interact with them on LinkedIn. I'll do some other things. Um, and then finally, I'm going to make a decision by, let's say, you know, Maiva posted something on LinkedIn and I've been following her for a few weeks. And then finally, I make a, made a decision. So in that mm -hmm. case, the, by first search attribution, all of the value is going to be attributed to the first blog post that made me discover that um, that brand, right? Mm -hmm. In last search attribution, and this is, I think, the way Google Analytics usually work on last search attribution mostly. So in last, last search attribution, all of the value get attributed to um, the last touch, the last touch point opposite to the first touch, right? Mm -hmm. So if, you know, I've been talking to Maiva for a while and um, I, let's say, have been visiting or, or engaging with our LinkedIn content on Flying, uh, Flying Cat Marketing's LinkedIn content for a while, um, but then finally, I got in touch with our sales team um, by reading a blog post that was like, you know, X B to B content marketing agencies. Um, I read that blog post and I converted right away. Let's say because I already had that brand affinity, right? So in that case, la by last touch attribution, all of that value, all of that credit is uh, going to be attributed to the last blog post, the, la la the last touch point. So yeah. that's last in this touch. Case it will be a blog post. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's last touch, and then there's um, linear attribution, which means that all of the touch points, all of the um, you know, pieces of content that I interacted with gets equal value. So the overall value gets divided into all of those touch points. Then there's W form, which means it's like simply a W, right? So you attribute 30% uh, touch, 30% 30 credit to the first, 30% to the uh, to the last, I think. So in simple words, I think I'm making this uh, complicated. In W form attribution, um, we attribute value to all of the touch points that took us one stage closer to the end conversion. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, for example, you know, one for once it would be, you know, maybe uh, subscribing to a newsletter. The second one can be um, uh, maybe connecting with Maiwa or LinkedIn. Um, the mm -hmm. third one can be um, becoming a lead, an actual lead, and I'm interested and I got in touch with Maiwa. Um, mm -hmm. the fourth one can be, I, I still, I had a call with Maiwa. She presented me the, the offer and something, but still I took two weeks and then I still engaged with one more blog post or maybe, you know, mm -hmm. one additional piece of content on LinkedIn. So all of these touch points where I'm, you know, converting one step closer, I'm going one step closer to the final end conversion. Um, those touch points gets the most value. And then lastly, okay. there is U shaped, um, attribution, which means the first and last touch gets the most value and then rest of the values um, divided among all of the other touch points that we had in between, right? Mm -hmm. So so it's okay. like making a U, right? So yeah. yeah. 
so by all of these kind of attribution models um obviously we, we're not going to use all of those attribution models you can stick with one that works best for your industry and your clients uh but what we're trying to get to is understanding how exactly the conversion journey works and what exactly me we mean when we say we don't have conversions data we might not have last touch conversions data but we might have first touch right uh or perhaps we have yeah. you know linear attribution data which means that we know where exactly um our prospects interacted with um what, what pieces of content they engaged with before converting so we have to understand what data do we have and we don't have so um in most cases i know um if they don't have you know um let's say full funnel conversion like they don't know linear attribution like you know all of the all of the touch points they still know nice. the last touch uh, attribution because google analytics is giving you that information and that information is very easy to get um all of the crms will give you that information so yeah i think what you can do best in order to you know track everything is to have that attribution software you, you need some attribution software is the if the sales journey is really long and then secondly rely on you know self attributed um attribution so like you know asking them where exactly you found us yeah. um and if you you already know this right we've been seeing so many amazing kind of leads from different kind of marketing channels um in our slack you know this automation that we usually get like you got a new lead and and the way we've been getting leads is amazing um from so many different kind of sources like a podcast or they found us through search literally reading a piece of content um and getting in touch with us because mm -hmm. maybe they knew my buffer about 2 to 3 weeks for example we don't know right but we mm -hmm. do know that all of those pieces of content played some role in the overall conversion so yeah um so in that case if you have some sort of conversion data just make sure that you you know what form of attribution are you going with and again if you don't have any conversions that you want to track conversions you don't want to rely on engagement yeah. metrics only um we can talk about you know average time on page or rankings or traffic but at the end of the day if you're not tracking conversions none of this really matters yeah sure so let's say just to summarize if you don't have exact uh conversion data then you can possibly look at your attribution model or what data do you have and then just start using whatever you have and if you don't have any kind of attribution or conversion data then you should start looking into adding those because those are very important to justify the investment in SEO right 100% 100% exactly so i mean we do need conversions data um it can come from you know in different forms of attribution and obviously one might be better than other but still i wouldn't say that you can rely on engagement metrics all alone um with your seo campaign you have to tie everything back to business metrics no matter what um you might change your attribution model um you might rely not you might not deploy that attribution software to look at the whole funnel but you still need to look at at least the last touch which google analytics is already giving you yeah 100% okay so we have just a little time and i wanted to ask this very very important question that all everybody will get how to overcome the number one objection from leadership how long until we see roi from seo So the short answer to this would be that it needs to be strategic as a move like you as an SEO strategist needs to know and you should be able to give an estimate ideally in most cases i would say um to your leadership uh before you can, they can see an ROI um i know that there's this norm of you know SEO strategists constantly complaining uh why exactly their clients or their leadership is expecting so much of them um and you know this this idea that seo takes time wait until you know 36 months until i give you any roi but um it does not make sense at the end of the day seo is a marketing channel and your leadership expecting something of business value out of that marketing channel makes total sense so so let's just you know establish that first now the second part is how exactly do we um estimate roi i think I explained this um in very detail in the SEO round table but you have to set SEO targets at the beginning of your project. If you're and and let me just say it out loud. If you're playing uh if you're if you're working on SEO without having an end objective then you're 
doing blindly like you're playing blindly you don't have a final destination you don't know where to stop you don't know how many pieces of content i need to create in a month you don't know how many backlinks do i need to create in a in a week um you don't know anything you're just doing it for the sake of it so you need to have an end goal and that end goal should be able to drive the 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 exact timeline for the roi right Th- that that end goal should tell you when exactly can you expect roi how many months uh would it take for me to you know get out of that negative burn rate so you i in simple words you have to calculate the cumulative cost you have to assess the outcome that you can get as a result of you know content optimization or new content and tie everything back to the revenue number um again based on all of the conversion rates like you know mqls to sales win rate um all of those kind of things like take into account all of the conversion rates assess how much m- more traffic and thus more revenue can you get from the optimization plus new content that you want to create in the next 12 months you blend everything together so you get you know a final traffic number that you can achieve once you have published or reoptimized all of the pages right so in, in mm-hmm. simple words let's say we have 200 pages to create um and um we can get about 200000 clicks if we create all those 200 200 pages so what you can simply do is you know divide that total traffic number by the total number of pages to get a traffic per page number and then simply mm-hmm. multiply it with the number of pieces you're going to create every month because you have a traffic per page number so you can define the scope now look at your resources you can create let's say five pieces of content and your traffic per page number is 100 multiply you know 5 by 100 you have a, you have an estimation of what you can get in a in a month so you can then you know estimate everything everything is simple math simple google sheets um formulas moving forward so you should be est- able to estimate the results the outcome the roi the cost of acquisition for example you know you can you can develop a whole road map so yeah but what i think um you you just m- need to make sure that you're thinking as a marketer not just an as an seo you have to tie everything back to business objectives so if you if you for don't sure. have a road map for your marketing team for your leadership team then you're not doing any good as an seo can i think that this is uh exactly what you discussed in the last seo round table right how to do is like step by step okay so then maybe we can um include that video in the show notes or maybe you can leave us a comment asking for that video and we'll uh we'll send it over because this is very this is we could talk about this for a very long time and i think it's yeah it's a bit complicated to just this five minutes five i know five minutes now here So yeah, let's do that. So if you want that recording, just leave a comment or DM us over LinkedIn and we'll get that for you. Okay. So just to close because we are over time. <laughs> and um I just wanted to thank you so much Usman for uh jumping in with me for this episode. I think it will be super super valuable for everyone doing reporting right now, which will be like everyone. uh and where can people reach out to you and find you you can find me on linkedin um just like any other flying cat marketing gatito right um we love totally linkedin you can find me by searching maybe usman akram um or i think my ter- linkedin handle is slash usman dash akram 5000 so yeah if you just search usman akram you should be able to find me with a with a pink background yeah for sure And mine is Mila Divela. You already know this, of course, with a with a red background as well. And okay, so next episode is going to be about how to secure next year's budget for SEO. So stay tuned. And if you have any questions about this, like questions that you normally get asked at this time of the year, please submit them. We're gonna answer them live. On the next episode, uh, you can do it by DMing us over LinkedIn. or uh um, leaving a comment on YouTube for this video. All right. So that's a wrap. Thank you so much Usman and thanks to everyone listening. Uh let us know what you think, any reviews, any comments, any input, feedback, whatever. Uh please share that with us. We're very excited to to act on it. And yeah, I guess I'll see you on Slack Usman. <laughs> Thank you so much Bila. See you. 
Thank you. Bye bye. And that's the end of the podcast right there. Hope you enjoyed the episode, but please don't go just yet. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It'll help other people like you discover us and get the same insights, and it would really help us out a lot. Um, thank you for being a loyal flying cat and for listening. See you next time.